Okay, what could cause prices to drop significantly? A massive change in consumer confidence. So this is what's interesting. Our economy is a consumer-based economy. The consumer spends, we have money. Consumer confidence over the last 30 days has actually gone up slightly, even with the economy showing signs of not improving, you know, of getting worse, and unemployment rising. Consumer confidence is pretty good. Consumer spending is slightly up, but it is becoming a uh, bifurcated market. Let me explain what I mean. The bottom part of the middle class, so let's say the middle of the middle and below is spending less. The middle and above is spending more. So that's becoming the tale of two markets. And we've talked about this on other podcast episodes and we have other videos about this. It's that idea of the K-shaped recovery. It's those that have assets are continuing to grow during this economy and those without are getting hit harder. Why? Inflation, taxes, insurance, cost of groceries. So if the consumer doesn't feel some reprieve, and this is why I believe more Fed rate cuts are coming, and I'm willing to make bets on them, and I am betting my own money other than just against you and the purchasing of more real estate right now. You can catch us at resg.com. Because I believe and know that the Federal Reserve is on the path of lowering rates, which is increasing demand. And as credit card debt gets cheaper, as auto loan debt gets cheaper, as business lines of credit gets cheaper, the economy will slowly start to speed back up. So Jerome Powell, I'm in the like, maybe soft landing camp right now. And based on the totality of the data and how things are moving and playing out in front of us. So I'm very cautiously optimistic about our economy, but we do have to prevent the consumer from going into the doom loop. And we have to prevent massive layoffs from happening. You can see this in the stock market right now. You can see the stock market where earnings are coming in less and revenue is decreasing, which means because your labor cost is one of your highest expenses, right? For a business. So they're now starting to look at their labor, but you know, Coca-Cola doesn't want to lay someone off because they're worried that, well, then those good people might move over to Pepsi. But if Coca-Cola starts to lay someone off and then Pepsi's earnings are slightly down too, well, then they might lay someone off also. So realize this is a cycle that if it starts, and this is why the Federal Reserve started cutting rates, that corporate America starts a wave of layoffs and it becomes a self-fulfilling loop. This one is still a problem. We're not fully out of the woods with the consumer, consumer confidence, doom loop, unemployment. This is why the Federal Reserve, the government, banks yes. can't let another 2008 happen because the most doom and gloom situation is losing your home, yes. is seeing your neighbors go into foreclosure, is because, I mean, it's the number one asset people have in their life. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, not, it's more than an asset. It's literally your home. So to be homeless, even if you go into renting, it's so devastating. That's going to put you into literally like a mental depression. And that's yeah. what they're trying to avoid. So it's interesting. Like you said, think about all the patterns, the things that I'm yeah. recognizing right now, um, avoiding foreclosure yes, or extending the foreclosure process to give more opportunities to like alleviate it or fix it. Lowering the interest rates, right? When they need to aggressively i mean that's always been the case they always drop it lower right faster or yeah, do they raise so, it faster so, so the answer is it depends but you are correct so generally speaking one of their first cuts is a big cut and they usually go one to three good size cuts and then slow down real estate being at least healthy or just steady might secretly be one of the most important things the Fed and the government keeps an eye on, yes. but they just don't mention it, right? Yes. They don't want they don't want anything no. to get sparked up. No, no, no. They do mention it. Okay, so remember, we're data nerds here. We're looking at these things for our listeners and paying attention. Yeah. What's the Fed's favorite metric for inflation? Uh, the core. Core PCE. Yeah. Okay. Which includes housing. 
they use PCE, but they love core. And how do they weight PCE and CPI? Like 40% of those metrics is based on housing. So over a third of how we measure inflation inside the economy is strictly based on housing. So they're sometimes going to pretend it's not important. They know it's vital. That's what I'm saying. Important. They pretend it. They don't like, they almost like brush over it. You want to talk about data in any given average American's life, like the real estate, the mortgage, the yeah. rent is the biggest financial factor. It's a huge, consistent monthly financial expense. And it's one of our basic human needs. So it has to always be taken into massive consideration. What could cause prices to drop dramatically? A massive change in population. So I went and looked at population. Holy cow, our population is growing pretty good right now. So popu people had babies during COVID. People had babies during COVID. And honestly, we turned back on immigration too. We need to fix part of our immigration and have a good immigration policy. That's a different story. And we need to close the border. But as of September 25th, there was 337,166,737 people here in the United States. This data is coming from the census.gov slash pop clock. You can go and find this. We have a birth here in the United States every eight seconds. We have a death every 11 seconds. We have an international migrant net every 27 seconds. So we have a net gain of one person in the U.S. every 15 seconds. So just since we started talking about this little thing, like six people moved into the United States, 